everybody, welcome back. It's been a while. It's been a long while. It's been, I think, since September we've done any uh, videos with, you know, on a regular basis. A lot of our stuff is driven by questions and comments we're getting here at the shop. You know, a lot of customer-driven um, concerns, things like that, things we're seeing on social media. And then, you know, with hunting season starting all over the country, we, you know, that, that really tapers off. And, um, you know, right now there's a lot of talk whether it's here in the shop, it's 10 o'clock right now, and we've gotten no less than almost, uh, I think, a dozen emails, uh, five or six calls already today. And everyone's talking about switchgrass. And that's the big thing right now. Habitat season 2024 has begun. Uh, it's early January. And for the most part, deer season throughout the country is pretty much over with. A lot of our friends down south are still hunting. But most of the Midwest is uh, starting their habitats, uh, you know, their designs, their plans, you know, a lot of questions on what to do. And a lot of those questions are uh, concerned with switchgrass. You know, how do I plant? What do I plant? What's the best choice? What's the best seed? And what we want to try to do here is maybe a two, possibly three part series on switchgrass on what we believe is the best uh, process for growing a, su a successful stand of switchgrass on your property. So we've got great partners with REAP Canada and Roger Sampson. They're a, a research organization in Canada. They've been working with native uh, grasses for almost 30 years. And when uh, I, I met Roger back in 2020, this man knows more about switchgrass than I think most people in the habitat sector combined. So I think this is a very important video uh, series on trying to you know, meander through a lot of the nonsense that has become um, the information on switchgrass. There is some good information out there, but what we're going to try to do is help you, uh, the customer, whether you're buying Northwood switchgrass, whether you're using RC switchgrass, or you're, you're just trying to learn about switchgrass and you're using someone else's, hopefully we can answer some questions and help you grow the best stand of switchgrass you can on your whitetail property. So, why us? It's, uh, we do get a bunch of questions. Why do I want to buy from Northwoods? Why do I want to buy the RC switchgrass? Well, we've been messing with switchgrass. We've been selling it for, I believe, eight years now. And one of the things about Northwoods is um, our reputation for the highest quality, the, some of the best pricing. And that, <clears throat> that is the same way with switchgrass. We quickly found out where we should be getting it from what we should be looking for, who we should not be buying it from, where we shouldn't be buying it from. And I think we had some of the best cave and rock switchgrass, some of the cleanest, some of the best germinating, because we were very finicky on where we were getting our switchgrass from. You know, we were actually rejecting orders when we were turning down work, basically. We had, we had people calling for switchgrass, and we were rejecting switchgrass just because the quality was so poor. So fast forward to 2020, and we started uh, seeing some posts and information presented by Roger Sampson. Again, he works with REAP Canada, a research organization that's been dealing with native grasses. And I was very impressed with his information. We struck up a conversation. Um, he talked about their RC line of switchgrass, RC Big Rock uh, particularly. And I thought, you know, if this does what they say it does or it can do, the potential for this, uh, for the habitat sector, was unbelievable. It's going to be a game changer. And we uh, took a chance and became, uh, I believe, one of Rogers and Reap Canada's first dealers here in the States. Uh, I think we were the first, maybe the second in the, in the habitat sector. Uh, what I mean by that is you know, hunters and land managers, um, that's the ha habitat sector. But I believe we're the biggest now. Uh, about three weeks ago, we had a semi stop by uh, and drop off our seed our first load of seed was 18,000 pounds. And I kind of looked and saw a bunch of the other dealers in the States, 2,000, 2,000, 4,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds. And I was, you know, we're, we're pretty honored to have that, uh, that, that Don and Roger would put their trust in us. So, um, you know, people, again, they understand the quality, the pricing we have here. And I think that's one of the reasons why if you're looking for switchgrass, we're probably the place to come to. So, Let's get into some of the questions that we're getting. The first one we get a lot of, and it's based off of a myth, uh, old information. Um, hard seed. There's no such thing as hard seed, folks. It's called dormant seed. 
you know. In back when we started selling switchgrass, there was only one or two sources of information um, regularly on switchgrass, and we were talking about hard C2 because just that's, you know, that was the only source of information. But one of the things I enjoyed about uh, working with Roger and Reap Canada is they quickly dispelled a lot of the myths and bad information out there about switchgrass. And this is one of them, hard seed. So we're going to take these numbers right here and go through them. I've got a bag of our RC uh, Big Rock switchgrass right here. <clears throat> and these are the numbers right off of our seed tag. So let's talk about this. So when you're looking at numbers on switchgrass, you get the three numbers you really need to pay attention to. The germination rate, dormant seeding, it's not hard seed, it's dormant seed. And the total germ, okay. And again, these are numbers right off of our uh, seed that was tested in November of 2023. So the germination, uh, they do a, in a lab, an independent lab tests the seed. In the first 14 days, any seed that germinates, that's this number right here, the germ percentage. Day 15, day 18, day 20, day 30, and 35, 40, that's the dormant seed. So after 14 days, anything else that germinates is dormant seed. It is not hard seed for a total germ of 92%. Now, some people might be saying, well, why isn't it 100%? Anything over 90 with native grasses is really, really good, okay? And I know personally, when we do a bunch of germ tests or we work with some of our partners, there's multiple tests and you could see maybe 98% on one test and 89% on another test. On our tags, we always take the lowest number. So again, you have to, um, uh, there's a lot of information out there uh, on social media uh, and there's a lot of the videos might be older um, there really is no such thing as hard seed folks it's dormant seed so that hopefully kind of dispels that myth now <clears throat> why is rc switch now the best choice you know, again we we've sold cave and rock i want to say for 18 years i'm sorry 18 years eight eight years we've sold cave and rock switchgrass we no longer sell it it's not on our shelf because this is so much better i'm not saying cave and rock is a bad choice but it's an older variety you know if i could get a clean lot in here that i really like the numbers we still might buy it but i don't think we've bought cave and rock switchgrass for almost a year ever since we've got this rc switchgrass it's such a better product okay and one of the reasons why I think it's a better product, it's the newest variety of switchgrass in the country. In 2020, this was introduced to the habitat sector. Again, habitat sector being you know land managers, CRP stuff, uh, deer managers, deer land managers, folks like you and me. And you can compare that to a lot of the switchgrass being sold right now is a 20, 25, even up to 50 year old variety. Now the physical seed that they're trying to get you to buy is not 20 to 50 years old, but the variety is. It's an old strain, it's an old variety. And to me, if you can buy the newest variety with much better seeding vigor, it grows faster, grows taller, stands up better, uh, that's what I'm looking for, which is why we're selling it. And we don't have any of these old varieties on the shelf. We just don't. There's the only switchgrass we on the shelf here right now is RC Big Rock. RC Tecumseh, which is more in, uh, inducive for sandier soils, drier conditions, and then RC Chippewa, which is a direct replacement for Cave and Rock switchgrass. The RC Chippewa should be here, I believe, in late February or March. Now, I'm going to show you a picture right now of this bag of seed and show you how big the seed is. Now it looks like a tiny seed, okay? If you compare it to rye, oats, or you know, even our, our HD screen, but for switchgrass seed, that's huge. It's bigger than an alfalfa seed. And with that big plump seed, you're looking for something that looks like a football, okay? You know, it's playoffs are right around the corner for the NFL, so we'll kind of throw that football analogy in there. But it looks like a football, and that's what you're looking for. And the bigger the seed, the more seeding vigor. That's why it comes out of the ground. I've seen tests they're doing right now in greenhouses 
where the RC big rock is two and three inches tall and the cave and rock, it's not even out of the ground yet. So that's something we're looking for. I mean, obviously, folks, this isn't some magic seed that you can just throw it out there, albeit at the end of the, this video, I'm going to show you what we did behind our shop here. But you still have to have good growing conditions. You still have to have a clean weed free seed bed. You still need moisture. And I think that's what got a lot of people into trouble this past spring as we went from throughout the Midwest. We went from cold temperatures um, and a lot of rain to instant drought, hot temperatures and instant drought. They didn't see a lot of their switchgrass until about August. So, but that's what we're looking for, fast growth, big seeds. And that's what we're seeing with this RC switchgrass. I'm going to have to... With these next two videos we're doing, I'm going to have to try to find this. Uh, there's, there's a comparison. Somebody sent me a picture. With, there was a dime, and then he had all sorts of switchgrass seeds all around this dime, and this RC Big Rock seed was so much bigger. But that's what we're looking for. So, now, another thing why I think the RC switchgrass is such a better choice, if not the best choice for most of the places in this country, is cost. Okay. We were selling last year, we were selling our cave and rock at the same price as we were RC Big Rock. Now this year our price went up minimal. I think we're right around 16 10 a pound. Uh, we sell it in five pound bags and 50 pound bags. Folks, I'm seeing switchgrass 20 bucks a pound, $25 a pound, $28 a pound. And this is my question. Actually, I have a couple questions. All right. These are, again, our 20 to 50-year-old varieties that these companies are trying to, buy, uh, trying to sell you. Is it worth it? I, again, it, we, we sell seed for a living here. If I thought these older varieties were, were such a good choice and a great option, whether it's a mix or a blend, they'd be on our shelf a long time ago. And I'm quickly finding out this is the best. The other thing is, is that... so. If you're spending 40, 50, 60 percent more than what you can buy it from us for again these old varieties, are you getting 40, 50, 60 percent better results? You know, I'm not sure how you would even gauge that, but if I'm spending $25 a pound on a bag of switchgrass, that's 50 percent higher than what we sell it for. Am I getting a 50 percent better return on my investment? Am I getting 60% better return on my investment? Okay. Why am I spending this kind of money? Ask yourself that. Something to think about. That's a, that's, that's, that's a lot of money, folks. I mean, you know, you're, you're talking $790 a bag versus, I don't know, $1,200, $1,300. What is the reasoning for that? Am I going to see that three years from now, a 50% better return on my investment. So something to think about. You know, the thing that's really um, piquing my interest uh, as far as cost goes is the professional installers, the people that do this for a living. We've gotten so many calls and contacts saying, I don't want to spend this kind of money anymore. Our clients do not want to spend this kind of money anymore. Can I buy some bulk RC switchgrass from you? Sure, we, we sell it in 50 pound bags. Folks, I'm more interested on what's in this bag, okay? Plain plastic bag, there's nothing fancy about it. This is what we do here. I'm not interested on who's on this bag or giant deer on this bag. You're not paying for that. That's, we do not do that here, okay? Obviously we need to make money, we're a business, but I'm more concerned about the contents in that bag. I'm not concerned about who or what is on the outside of that bag. So just something to think about. Now, with the new year and the new habitat season, social media is exploding right now. Um, you know, everybody's talking about switchgrass. All these uh, YouTube stars are trying to get their switchgrass videos out. Social media, podcasts, switchgrass, switchgrass, switchgrass. And it's, I think that's one of the reasons why we get so many contacts is because people kind of understand we're, we're, we're just straight shooters here. We don't BS people. You know, if I can answer your question, I will. If I can't, I've got... A handful of individuals I can reach to fairly quickly and get a lot of those questions answered but if you're on social media right now uh, you're on Facebook Roger and a few of his um, partners um, people that that he likes to work with have started a 
phenomenal Facebook page. It's called Switchgrass for Habitat. I'm not involved with the page. I, I actually go there to learn. I go there to help out. Um, great resource. Uh, there's about a dozen folks there that do a lot of switchgrass planting. And not only RC switchgrass, they plant other companies' switchgrass. But one of the things about this is that the nonsense and the BS is weeded out fairly quickly. Pro staffers are, you know, they're not there very long. So it's probably the best source of information for switchgrass. And there's no such thing as a dumb question. You're not going to be made fun of or anything like that. You know, what I tell folks is when they say, hey, I got a dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. You know, 20 years ago, I was a rookie. So if you want to go there and just <clears throat> dig through the posts and the articles, there might be something that, that uh, might answer your questions. You know, And if you have questions and you want them answered, by all means, ask them in the comments below. We're going to try to do, I think, two more videos, one on... Um, installing switchgrass and growing it and I'd like to do another one on maintaining switchgrass and how to make that the best stand of switchgrass so that's coming probably in the next the next week or two we're real busy here and you know like I said I'm a seed company with a YouTube channel I'm not a YouTube channel with a seed company so I'm not quite sure uh, when those videos are going to get done but this is probably the best source I've seen for switchgrass for wildlife uh, habitat managers, uh, they have also started uh, for farming, a switchgrass for farming page. So a couple of great resources if you're looking for it. So I'm going to show you now, I'm going to take you out behind the shop. Uh, we swept up um, some switchgrass last spring and just kind of threw it out uh, on a sandy bank well, on the edge of our parking lot. And <laughs> this is not how I recommend planting switchgrass, but the results were pretty cool. Okay, so we're in the back of our shop right now. Actually, we're on the north side of our building. And you can see uh, we're standing on about four feet of fill just to level the parking lot out. And you can see the bank here. There's some leaves on it. We've got trees and stuff here. But I'm looking directly south, and the sun is right there. So this does not get a lot of sun. Uh, but sometime in, I believe it was May, we came back here. We just we swept the floor and threw some RC Big Rock back here and just walked away. We, you know, we threw, you can see some remnants of brassica and there's, there's a little bit of clover down there. We just, we, we throw stuff out here, just throw some seed out here. And this is RC Big Rock. That down there is four feet tall. I did nothing. It's pure sand. This is all sand bank and it grew. It did, you know, for, for what we have sitting here, the conditions, no spraying, no fertilization, Nothing. Low, you know, again, you look, there's no sun back here. Low light. It's this, this right back here is probably get the best sun. You know, you, you can start to see we're, we're getting a little bit here and that's, that's four feet tall right now. And I would not recommend just throwing it out here and, and walking away. But that's basically what we did, and it's four feet tall. This is RC Big Rock switchgrass in probably the absolute worst case scenario, and it's four feet tall. I mean, you know, like here, this is probably three. This is four. Um, down here is probably three. But again, it, it was it, it didn't start growing. I don't think till June, end of June, maybe July, because that's when the rains came back. Um, so. Again, I would not recommend planting it this way, but this is this is how good that seed is. I really, really like this seed. Like I said, folks, that's not exactly how I would plant switchgrass, but this RC Big Rock continues to amaze me. Um, you know, if you're looking for switchgrass or you've had switchgrass problems, man, that's that seed stuff to beat. So we're proud of being the biggest habitat uh, sector dealer for RC switchgrass, and we're going to bring you some great videos coming up, hopefully. It'll help answer some questions. It might stir some thought. If you've got questions, again, ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, folks, and uh, we'll see you in a week or two.